First of all, I want to kick off with some thank yous. Uh, so I want to thank the Eclipse organisation for the, uh, all the help they've given us with the facilities um, this week. Apparently, according to mine, they've been extremely helpful, so we'd just like to get that on the record. Um, we'd also like to point out that we're streaming at the moment. Um, again, thanks to Mike for setting all that up. It's been uh, really slick and no, uh, no stress at all there. We are screaming. <laughs> it's nice been screaming. That's right. <laughs> we're screaming and we're streaming. Okay, I'd also like to thank Paul Adrasak from the uh, OSHI Washington User Group. So if any of you are local here and are interested in getting involved in a local user group, you need to have a chat with Paul and get signed up. And uh, the, U, uh, the Washington user group is the first US local user group we've got. So hopefully in due course we'll get a few more running uh, in various places. But um, again, thank you to Paul for uh, coming along tonight with the other members of that user group and for making that happen. And who else do I need to? I need to thank the speakers this evening. So Neil Bartlett will be on in a second. And, uh, but I'd also like to thank Tom Watson and Peter Crees and also the mystery speaker that we have on later. Okay, so the actual agenda. Richard. Yep. So two things. Yep. Trying to talk about this. Yep, go on. Um, I know you need to tell everyone who you are. Okay. So, um, I don't know if everyone saw when you came in the top table. Um, if you want to enter the prize draw, we've got brand new hot off the press, the ink's still wet, um, from Kirk Gomes Child. It's, it's literally hot off the press. So Kirk is here and he signed it, I believe. Um, we've then got two copies of Oestra in action and two copies of Oestra in depth. So if you fill in the details, put them in the box at the end and uh, you'll be in the chance for, for winning that. I have to say thank you to Manning and also to Prentice Hall. And Manning also have Enterprise Oestra in action. Um, Tim Ward is here. And unfortunately that's not hot off the press yet. <laughs> but it will be slightly tepid off the press next year, so you'll have to come back. Okay, thank you, Mike. So, um, as we said, we're streaming this at the moment, so the next attendees can, what, tweet questions, I guess that is. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so at the following, how shows do I boff? Um, and we've got, as you can see on the board, the following session this evening. So Neil's going to kick off with job rate modules, as do I and Jigsaw. Then we're going to go into subsystems. Then we're going to go into how OBR makes the world wonderful from Peter Cruz. And then we've got a special surprise at the end. Okay, so with that, I'll now pass over to Neil Bollett to talk about job rate modules first try and Okay, thanks, Richard. Hello, everybody. Um, okay, so jigsaw, um, um, jigsaw, Java eight modules, um, and OSGI, um, and how they may um, interoperate. Um, a special thanks for this uh, for assistance with this session um, to Tim Ellison, who is uh, at the back there. I'll be telling you a bit about the, the work that Tim has done. Um, and uh, we did a session uh, with a similar subject matter at uh, Jack's London um, late last year, I believe it was. Um, so, um, yeah, thank you, Tim. So we're going to move on uh, and talk about um, modularizing the JDK. So we all know that the jigsaw... Um, is one of the main features that's coming up in Java 8 uh, and uh, talking about the motivation for why we want to modularize uh, the JRE itself. Um, the JRE is of course monolithic, you have to get the whole thing if you want to get a Java installation. Um, it's become quite large. Um, download time, startup time, they're all directly affected by the number of types available at runtime. Um, for example, uh, the, uh, the Oracle uh, 1.7 Windows boot class path these days contains nearly, nearly 20,000 classes. Um, RT.jar alone, the index alone, is approximately one megabyte. Um, so this directly impacts the startup time of every Java application. Uh, and so it's obviously quite attractive to be able to say, let's improve download times, improve startup times of the, of the JRE by making it more modular. And if only Java had a module system that we could use to, uh, to modularize this thing. Um, as we all know, OSGI is not going to be used for this. Uh, and I'll tell you a little bit about why the motivation for that. Um, um, the motivation for creating a new module system, um, 
a little bit of background, of course, we're modularizing the JRE, and the JRE is, um, aside from a JVM, uh, it is also a library. Um, it's, um, it's a library that's evolved very organically and haphazardly over the last 13 or more years. Um, it's a very poorly designed library, to be honest. It's got lots of cyclic dependencies, lots of very strange, weird, unexpected dependencies that you would just never imagine being in there. Um, very poor uh, coherence of many of these packages. Things like java.util, you know, as always happens when you create a, a generic utils package, it's very poorly coherent, it has dependencies on everything. Um, and as a result, um, if you are going to modularize this library, splitting the packages is kind of unavoidable. Um, and as we all know, in OSGI, splitting packages is, is frowned upon. Um, of course, the good news is we can split packages in OSGI. We can support split packages um, via the use of require bundle. OK, so there must be something a little bit more going on. Um, there is this second issue, which is the single class loader assumption. Uh, many parts of the JRE libraries um, assume that there is a single boot class loader, and they will simply break. For example, if they say get class loader and it does not return null, then they will not behave as they expect it to behave. Um, also, the, the package private accessibility, you know, the default accessibility, um, does require packages to be in a single whole class loader. Um, package private is actually private within a runtime package. A runtime package, according to the JVM spec, is a package as loaded by a particular class loader. Um, and so, in order to get this to work in a modular uh, world, we're going to need to split packages across modules, but not across class loaders. Uh, and so we need to break this one-to-one -one mapping of uh, modules to class loaders that we have in OSGI. But OSGI does support that already. Um, OSGI supports shared class loaders through fragments. We have fragments, a fragment merges into the host bundle, and it shares the class load of the host bundle. So, there's something else going on here, but the dependency kind of goes in the wrong direction. Um, you know, we, um, in OSGI, the fragment depends on the host. And what they want in Jigsaw is the idea that the host, which they wouldn't really call the host, but the, uh, the, the starting library, would depend on another library and pull that library into its, uh, into its class loader space. Um, and so we have our dependency kind of in the wrong direction, at least the way it's perceived by the, the Jigsaw authors. But we can support that as well with the generic requires uh, capabilities model that's in um, OSGI uh, release 4.3. Um, but unfortunately, the fragment still does depend on that one specific host. Um, the, uh, it, can, it can plug into multiple versions of that host, but it has a, uh, a, a bundle symbolic name for the host bundle that it attaches to, uh, and so it can't be used by other hosts. It's unclear whether there's any sort of use case for it to be used by other hosts, but um, still, um, it is a potential limitation. And unfortunately, the, the professor's response to this is, well, yeah, okay, you got us. Um, but we're pretty sure that we could have worked this out if you'd come and talk to us. We could have supported this, but there you go. Um, anyway, the usual and best approach, when I have a very poorly factored and, and low, coher sorry, uh, low coherency library, um, and I want to move it into OSGI, is to refactor it and move the classes to the packages where they logically belong. Um, this is kind of obviously impossible with the JRE libraries, uh, because you have, by an estimate the Sun made in 2009, you have 9 million Java developers in the world. Um, and probably, I believe, billions, literally billions of Java applications, all running and depending on this library. Um, so refactoring this is really not an option. So, a little bit of information on how Jigsaw works. Uh, Jigsaw will have um, this kind of sub-language almost. Um, we have some new keywords. All the new keywords that I'm going to show you, they're, they're kind of scoped keywords. So they are keywords only within the context of this one particular special file, which is called modulinfo.java. And that compiles to modulinfo.class. So where in OSGI we have manifest, um, mod in a Java module it will have module info dot class. Um, so uh, because these are scoped keywords, I can still have an identifier somewhere else in my Java code that says module or 
uh, some of the other keywords. So module, um, name of module, and the version, and there'll be some other stuff. Um, modules require other modules by name, uh, and optionally by version. So module B here uh, depends on module A. And you see we have some, uh, some uh, version here, and we can have a range of those versions as well. The syntax looks quite familiar. <laughs> Um, to support the kind of shared class loading stuff, which is really required in the JRE, although not necessarily anywhere outside the JRE, there would be this uh, local requires. So require local, um, and then everything else is the same. And that says load that module in the same class loader space as the originating module. Um, to support exports, or rather to support hiding, so that everything does not have to be exported, um, there is this export clause. So Exports will, um, will export a certain set of packages or types, individual types. Um, so, yes, that's pretty obvious what that does there. And there will support wildcarding. Um, and then there's a, um, a strange idea, which, which I think is comparable with friend classes in C++, if you uh, encounter those, uh, where modules say which other modules are permitted to require them. So this module A here, um, can only be used by B. Um, so it's a kind of a, um, a, an idea of creating an internal module and I restrict the set of modules that are allowed to use this module. I think that's a completely broken way of doing modularity, incidentally, but um, as I found out in my tutorial on Monday, there's still people who want to do this. Um, provides. Um, modules can kind of logically provide other module names. Um, and this is comparable, I believe, with um, the idea of virtual packages uh, from, for example, Debian. Um, and this, would, this supports the idea of substitution, because something will depend on um, stacks, for example, JDK stacks. And, and JDK, JDK stacks here is a, is a kind of a virtual module name, uh, which, has, um, which doesn't have its own implementation. And here we have um, you know, the IBM implementation of that virtual module. And so that would support um, substituting different implementations, but it wouldn't support the kind of refactoring operations that we get when we use import package, like splitting and joining modules. Um, jigsaw modules also support a, um, an entry point. Um, kind of a strange keyword to use here, class. I would have called this maybe main or something. And this is the equivalent of saying the main class header in a jar file, so you can launch a particular module um, there will be probably a, a minus module switch on the Java launcher uh, that launches this main from this particular module. As we've seen, modules will be versioned. Um, requirements can use exact versions or ranges. When we specify a version, it will be an exact version. It's a bit of a difference there between what we do with OSGI. Um, versions will explicitly have no semantics, and, and the idea of semantics on versions has been largely rejected with any discussions on the, uh, on the jigsaw uh, mailing lists. Um, at least they do have ordering. You know, the versions are ordered, so I can take two, two versions and work out which one of those two versions is higher. Now, that wasn't always the case with jigsaw. Originally, they didn't even have the idea that you could compare two versions, but um, recent versions do allow that. So how does this compare to OSGI? Um, there is a big difference in terms of life cycle. Jigsaw basically has no life cycle because it's not a dynamic, it's not a dynamic module system. Um, in OSGI, we have a resolver. Um, and the resolver we have in OSGI runs at runtime, and it finds the best fit for the currently installed bundles at runtime. Um, Jigsaw does all of its resolution uh, ahead of time. So it will resolve during build and installation. Uh, and that works because there's no dynamics. Um, potentially, it could mean that there's, uh, there's optimizations that could happen. So you could have all the resolution uh, done, and things would be optimized for the runtime. So maybe you can launch a little bit quicker. Metadata, obviously, we can see that the metadata in, in uh, Jigsaw is in something called a module info.class file. So if you want to read that metadata, you'd better know your bytecode pretty well, um, or have a tool uh, that can open that, uh, open that file and, and um, give you that information. Yes, Tim? Are they uh, going to adjust the jar spec so that module info class will be nice and early in the jar file? Like, does manifest pass the first entry? Uh, can you repeat the question? 
Oh, yes, sorry. Um, Tim is asking whether the, um, the Java file specification will be uh, modified so this metadata file appears early. As we know, manifest.mf in a Java file should always be the first file, so it's easy to read quickly. Um, my answer, unfortunately, is I don't know. And they may not even use Java files. There's discussion of having an entirely new archive format. I, I do actually know the answer to the ah, question in thank the context you, of the current state of things. Um, when you install a module, um, I'm not a, a jigsaw guy, but I looked at the jigsaw code recently. Uh, it, when you install a module in uh, in jigsaw, in the module repository, it basically, um, the, the installer does some stuff with the jar file, and one of the things it does is it takes out the module info.class file, and it puts it separately in a directory structure beside the jar file. So it can be read before the jar is read. That's how they do it. Thanks, David. Um, whereas, of course, as you know, we use this, well, it's only kind of readable, uh, but it is sort of readable. Uh, it's manifest. not unreadable. Sorry, it's not completely unreadable, yes. I don't like the line wrapping, I don't like the spaces at the front of the line, and the way it splits words sometimes, you can't so Anyway, it's sort of more readable. Um, uh, the other big, big difference is, of course, that um, uh, Jigsaw has these whole module dependencies. Um, Similar to require bundle, uh, there's no concept of import package, um, and split packages are obviously going to be supported because that's the main feature that they needed. Um, prediction, of course, is that Jigsaw is going to suffer all the same problems that we see in OSGI when we when we use require bundle, um, and you know some of the stuff that ha that had to happen in in things like Eclipse Core runtime. Uh, a good example of how that that really sort of breaks down. Um, so ultimately, I think that you know Jigsaw is, is technically going to achieve its goal of modularizing the JDK, but um, it won't do anything to, to reduce developer maintenance burden. In fact, it'll make it harder to maintain this stuff. Whereas OSGI's goal and, and what it, we achieve, I believe, is, is actually making things easier to maintain, um, given the fact that, okay, we do have to go through a certain amount of pain and change to, to perhaps move a legacy code base to it. Anyway, interoperability. Um, I can whine about Jigsaw as much as I like, but it's not going to go away. And you will. Yes, I will. I will continue <laughs> to do so um, at every opportunity. Um, they are both here to stay, uh, so let's try to get the, both of both, the best of both worlds. Um, obviously, we're established, we're widely used, um, but Jigsaw is underway, and, it, and it's a key part of Java 8. Uh, you know, Pretty much, um, there's no way that Oracle could, could back out of this now without losing face in an extremely major way. Um, and um, so it doesn't, there are potentially ways that we can work together and maybe not end up with a zero sum game of it has to be us winning and them losing or vice versa. Um, just a quote, I'm not going to read it all out. This is a quote from the requirements document associated with the Java 8 module system. Now, there is no JSI yet, which is a bit of a problem, but. Um, there is a requirements document on the Jigsaw website that says this, and it essentially says, you know, OSGI interoperability is a requirement of the new Java 8 module system, whatever it is. And that's the link that you can follow. So, um, Tim, uh, Tim Ellison created, uh, well, he proposed and is now the, um, the project lead for uh, Project Penrose, which is a, a, a project running at the OpenJDK. Um, and it's a, a, a project to work on uh, Jigsaw slash OSGI interoperability. Um, it's called Project Penrose. And the idea is there's, there's these four levels. There may be additional levels after this, but there's these four levels um, at which we can imagine working together. Um, level zero um, is the absolute minimum, which is tolerate. Uh, I'll explain these in a moment. There's tolerate, understand, exploit, and cooperate. So level zero, um, tolerate. Um, basically, we need to make sure that OSGI still works on Java 8. That's pretty much essential. Uh, incidentally, if it doesn't, then they've broken backwards compatibility of Java in a very major way. So hopefully this will still be the case. But in order to ensure this, uh, um, Tim has done some work um, and, uh, and has checked that, yes, so far, OSGI is still working fine on Java 8. Um, and we would also like to be able to have 
modules slash bundles that have both Jigsaw and OSGI metadata in the same jar, and that works. So um, achievement unlocked. That is working. Level zero. Level one would be, um, let's teach OSGI to read a, a Jigsaw module info. So we could load a Jigsaw module as a bundle into OSGI by understanding module info dot class. And there it's a case of, well, how do we map these metadata concepts from Jigsaw into OSGI concepts? So some of them are obvious, like requires becomes require bundle, exports becomes export package, and things like that. Some of them, like permits, um, less obvious how we, how we might achieve that. Uh, that's an ongoing discussion. Um, and once we've done that, of course, then we can just treat these things as bundles and resolve them using the existing OSGI resolvers. Level two, um, we can start to exploit some of the features that Jigsaw offers, such as the, uh, the publication repositories. So we could, um, we could instantiate modules into our runtime from the, from the Jigsaw repository. And level three and above would be essentially full cooperation. We have Jigsaw and OSGI working at the same time. We're both loading modules, perhaps you know, even OSGI modules can depend on Jigsaw modules and vice versa. Um, achievements so far. Um, the OSGI tests, so the, um, obviously OSGI Alliance has a, a set of compliance tests. Um, and those have been run on um, a Jigsaw-enabled runtime. So that was Equinox 3.7, uh, which is the OSGI reference implementation, and the OSGI R4.3 compliance tests. And those passed, but also the, the nice thing, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with what Tim and his team have done. They've set up a, I think it's Hudson, right? You've set up a Hudson instance, uh, which is continuously doing this. So the second something in, in the JVM breaks, in, in JDK breaks OSGI, um, I'm hoping that somebody in Oracle is going to get a phone call from somebody in IBM saying you broke OSGI. Um, <laughs> so, um, and the second thing that was done was um, running a Java application as either an OSGI or a Jigsaw module. Uh, so, Java 2D demo, uh, broke it into uh, functional units, run it either in, jo in uh, Jigsaw or in OSGI. So, that's the achievements passed so far. So, tolerate, uh, tolerate level uh, is passed. No other levels have been passed yet. Um, the goals going forward are looking at how we can map these Jigsaw module uh, ideas into OSGI equivalents and how we can start to load Jigsaw modules and use them. Um, and that's a discussion, of course, about how to interpret those. And there may be some, some changes that are required. Uh, in fact, very likely there will be some changes that are required. Um, and those changes will probably be made by Tom in, in uh, Equinox, uh, or your team uh, in Equinox, uh, at least prototyped, right? But um, I see him going. <laughs> <laughs> your team? Delegation, Tom, it's the, it's the best. Um, um, and then potentially after that, we can use, uh, we can use these Jigsaw reification APIs to install uh, modules from the, uh, from the Jigsaw repository. Um, resolve them using the OSGI resolver and so on. And then, um, then you know, we can start to think about how we can possibly do uh, interoperability, but that's a little far <coughs> off. Um, so there's a timeline for this, and it's actually quite urgent, because um, at least according to the published schedule, um, Java 8 will be out in summer 2013, uh, summer of next year. Um, and that means there's going to be a code freeze very early in 2013. Um, looking at the activity on Jigsaw, they seem to have basically finished. Now, it, it's, there seems to be a few things that they haven't done yet, but there's no activity at the moment, or very little activity. So we think they're basically done. Um, there's no JSR yet, um, and it, perhaps there never will be a JSR, so maybe this will be the first major feature of Java that isn't uh, backed by a JSR, but who knows? Um, it is time for that to open if it is going to be opened. Um, but this means that if they're going to put this into um, Java in mid-2013, any changes that we need to push into Jigsaw to make it work better with OSGI, we kind of need to do it now. They need to be done sooner rather than later. So how can you get involved? Um, 
As I said, Penrose, the project is the interoperability um, project. It's being provisioned, it's at OpenJDK. Uh, that's the home page. It doesn't really have very much information except a link to the mailing list, which you can join. Um, and there is a Mercurial um, repository of code, which is essentially a branch uh, or, a, or a fork of the, um, of the main jigsaw code. So that's how to get involved. Um, any sort of questions about that process as well? Tim is obviously here. Many thanks to him for his info and, and what he's done on this so far. Um, and that's it. Any questions? Yes, Dimitri. Again, Tim knows an awful lot about that. He was the, the lead on Harmony. Um, what Harmony did is they created modules with OSGI metadata. Oh, sorry. Um, the question was um, uh, Harmony was able to, uh, to modularize the JDK with, with OSGI, essentially. Sorry to summarize that um, uh, in a slightly more limited way than you said. Um, yes, they. They did. The modules were defined with OSGI metadata. There was never an OSGI runtime running inside the JVM. Uh, but the, the modules were defined in that way with the OSGI uh, format metadata uh, developed using the tooling in, uh, in Eclipse PDE. And, uh, and that was done. But, well, Harmony is dead. Afraid to say. Any other questions? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> You, you said it rather harsh. Well, <laughs> he knows. He's, he's had the grieving but period. How many years no more? Or... <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, sorry. How many has not been has been uh, dropped by <laughs> IBM? <laughs> there is potentially community uh, IBM support lost for it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> by not putting any resources on it anymore at all. <laughs> sorry. There is a question. Sorry. Oh, well, on the tweets, yes. Should I read it out? Uh, that problem, is it? Okay, a question about why are friend modules wrong and why is there X friends org Eclipse Equinox Security UI in manifest of org Equinox Security? Okay, so the first part is why do I think that friend modules are a bad idea? And this is from Yaroslav Tulash, who I believe is one of the NetBeans developers. Yes. Um, so why, why are friend modules wrong? I think, it's, um, I think it's an extremely fragile way to set up modularity to say, I, I as a module have pre-knowledge of who is going to use me. Um, if, I'm, if I'm a module and I'm going to be exposing anything, then that should be exposed to everybody. And I shouldn't have sort of preconceived ideas of who is going to use this functionality. If it's, if it's public functionality, then it's public. And if it's not, then hide it. Uh, that's my, that's my belief about that. Do you want to add something about that, Peter? The, the core value of modularity is the fact that you can assume that nobody knows about something. That you're the only one that has knowledge of a certain detail in your implementation code. That's the power of modularity. Well, you can have a friend, but if the friend knows about the detail, you cannot change it anymore without breaking your friend. So it only knows when your friends are really, really, really close, and you really have a lot of really that close friends. If they're that close, put them in the same bundle, put them in the same module, because they have to be, the only way you can use friend modules, as people talk about it, is if they're compiled in the build, same build cycle, if they are from the same version. It's the key thing is you expose something, you're bound, by that contract that you put out. If it's a friend or a public, it doesn't make a difference. You lose all the advantage of modularity by making that detail known outside your module. It's, it's, a, it's a binary thing you do. Thanks, Peter. Excuse me. <coughs> Thanks, Peter. The, the second part of the question is, why, did, why does Eclipse essentially have this ex-friends thing? Well, I'm sorry, just because something is done in Eclipse doesn't mean it's good OSGI. And really? re remember, Eclipse had legacy when they came to OSGI. Oh that's, that's all I have to say about that. Uh, <laughs> so, um, and doesn't look like there's any more questions yeah, here. Any? Had, buddies too, right? right, yes. Friends and buddies, slightly different. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, so uh, thank you very much, and um, I will hand over to Tom uh, Watson, who's going to be talking about um, subsystems. <laughs> Where does this come from? <laughs>